Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us here on Crime 2 News at 5. I'm Whitney Ward. It is a race too close to count. Next week, counties all across Washington will begin recounting ballots by hand for a very tight race for public lands commissioner. We are taking a look right now at the statewide results. Democrat Dave Updegrove is only ahead of Sue Keel Peterson by 51 votes. Election officials say this hasn't happened in decades. So what does this process look like? Well, in our effort to bring you more to every story, Krem 2's Shannon Mowdy went to the Spokane County Election Headquarters today to learn more. Shannon? Well, Spokane County just finished counting and certified its election Tuesday, but starting Monday morning, a handful of employees will come back to the elections office to count by hand thousands of ballots in this tight race. Days after its primary election was certified, Spokane County's counting room is quiet, empty, but not for long. So we'll end up recounting just under 145,000 ballots, which is a lot of ballots. Auditor Vicki Dalton says as they finished the tallies this week, employees were anticipating it wasn't a wrap on the primary. Yeah, they were already aware that they would be coming back in all likelihood to perform a manual recount. A mandatory manual recount is triggered, according to the Secretary of State, when candidates are separated by less than a thousand votes and less than a quarter of a percent of the total votes cast. It's been 20 years since that's happened in a statewide election. When there were two recounts and a lawsuit, before Christine Gregoire was declared governor. It's been about 60 years since a statewide recount in a primary election. The recounts are less unusual since 2001 for Dalton's crew. Spokane County has done 29 recounts. Most of them have been hand or manual recounts. So we are very skilled at this. We are very accustomed to it. 12 teams of two will fill these seats next week with observers from the campaigns or political parties also standing tableside as the count happens. I know it sounds easy to count. You just grab a piece of paper and you go one, two, three, four. That's not how it works. Counting, especially this kind of tedious work that's going to go on for hours and days, is very, very difficult. A painstaking process that'll likely take four days. Dalton says actually very few recounts result in changes in the numbers. Shannon Mowdy, Crum 2 News. Shannon, thank you very much. We want to switch gears now to a big change in the forecast, possible gusty winds and heavy rain, and it all starts tomorrow. Our chief meteorologist, Jeremy Legu, live here in the studio with more on a weather impact alert day tomorrow. Yeah, it's been a while since we've had one of those, and it's all as we get a big shift in our overall weather pattern today. A high near 90 degrees has it feeling very, very summer like. But by tomorrow, this time, you're going to go, wait a minute, what happened? That's why we have a weather impact alert day. It's one of those ones where we just say, hey, something's happening. It's worth paying attention to the weather. Later in the day, we are going to get gusty wind, storms, and rain that's likely heavy in spots. But as it all develops, there is going to be enough wind that we have a blowing dust advisory. That blowing dust advisory lasts for tomorrow afternoon along Interstate 90, Highway 2, and 195. Basically, visibility could drop because we have very loose topsoil that is going to be blown around as the gust front arrives. It likely arrives sometime between 2 and 4 p.m. As it arrives, you're going to go, wow, it's really windy. And then it just is going to stay that way until the rain starts and then expect locally heavy rain, maybe a strike of lightning and a rumble of thunder, and that continues through Friday evening. Overnight, we'll catch a break. Saturday morning, another round of showers, and as those move out, we head into a dry end of the week. There we go. 70 degrees Saturday, 72 and sunny on Sunday. All right, Jeremy, thank you. Spokane police are continuing to search for a suspect behind the suspicious fires in Brown's Edition and Peaceful Valley this week. Two fires started near People's Park on Monday afternoon. It grew to about five acres and even threatened a nearby condo. Then just several hours later, three more brush fires popped up near Highbridge Park. The fire department believes both sets of fires were intentionally started. At this time, police do not have a suspect in this arson investigation. This isn't the first time, though, Spokane has seen a string of intentional 
intentionally set fires. Prem 2's chief journalist Amanda Rowley is bringing you more to this story tonight. She is joining us here live in the studio with a look at how recent arson cases in Spokane have been handled. Amanda? In the past two years, three suspects have been arrested for setting some pretty significant fires in the Spokane area. At this point, a suspect in the fires this week hasn't been arrested, but past arson cases may give some insight to how this week's case could play out. The most notable of Spokane's arson arrests happened this time last year. On the evening of August 3rd, Vicki Smith set multiple fires across Spokane. Initially, a brush fire in the West Hills neighborhood prompted immediate evacuations. Police arrested Smith a week later, setting her bond at $75,000. Investigators say she admitted to starting eight total fires in the same day, including five in the Dishman Hills natural area. She said her message was about money spent on homelessness and no one being housed. A month later, Smith pleaded guilty to first and second degree arson, landing a sentence of nearly five years in prison. In June this year, Spokane police arrested Chad Horn for allegedly setting several fires downtown. Court documents say detectives later connected Horn to another fire in May at a dog grooming shop in North Spokane. Court documents say his mental capacity is being evaluated. His bond was previously set to $50,000. At the end of July, police began investigating a string of fires set on Spokane's South Hill, including one that destroyed Squeaky's car wash on Regal Street. Police arrested a 13-year-old and charged him with arson. They believe he matches the description of the suspect who allegedly started the car wash fire. Juvenile cases don't typically set bond amounts, but court documents say he was held in detention starting on July 26th, and a scheduling order filed on August 6th says he is no longer in custody. His current trial date is set in September. Now, the Spokane County Prosecutor's Office told me they take arson cases very seriously. First degree arson is a class A felony, making it one of the most serious crimes the state prosecutes. It's up there with murder and rape, which are also class A felonies. Prosecutors say depending on criminal history, arson is punishable up to life in prison. Amanda Rowley, Krem 2 News. Amanda, thank you very much. A big shakeup in Seattle Mariners leadership. Scott Service has been fired as the team's manager. Reports started surfacing this morning saying the Mariners were removing service and the Mariners just confirmed that decision here within the last several hours. Mariners Hall of Fame catcher Dan Wilson has now been named as the interim manager. Two new construction projects started in Spokane today, causing some headaches for drivers. So take a look here at your screen. Washington Street, Maxwell and Boone will be reduced to one lane tonight and tomorrow. In the meantime, all northbound lanes of Market Street will be closed and southbound lanes will be reduced to one lane for construction crews starting work on Monday. That project is set to wrap up on September 6th. If you'd like to see a full list of detours for both of those projects, just go to our website, creme.com.